Ohio State is more excited for a Monday than anyone else because the Buckeyes finally get a day off tomorrow on Monday. But first, they had to get through a hot, hot day four of training camp uh, at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. That's Andy Backstrom. That's the veteran, Tim May. I am just Spencer Holbrook. We are here to break down everything that we saw from day four, but also kind of recap a little bit of days one through four. A lot to learn from this football team. We've learned a lot. The notebook is absolutely I'm going to unload that a little bit on the LettermanRoad.com on Monday. But, Tim, what would you learn today as we, we wrap up day four and then the Buckeyes get the break, then they go into a little bit more heavy-duty training camp? Uh, what did I learn today? i tell you what was reinforced today is I think these running backs are big time. Yeah. Now, you say that, they haven't practiced. I mean, I keep coming back. They haven't practiced real football yet where running backs are allowed to be thudded or even – I don't even think they're even being thudded right now, but definitely not tackled. And so we'll see, but Trevian Henderson, man, he's just got an explosive, you know, back in the good old days before he got started getting banged up and stuff, he looks 100%. Quinshawn Judkins had a really long run. Mm-hmm. You know, but to make a run on a day like today and have it not whistled dead, it means you've gotten through some places, right? Yeah. So maybe we'll to reevaluate the way we were gushing about the defense yesterday. No, I'm just joking. Uh, and then James Peoples, man, every time I look up, he's making a play. I mean, he's, he's, he's coming at you, a number 20, right in your, right in your, uh, right in your wheelhouse. So that just jumps out to me, the weapons that are available to this football team uh, headed into this season uh, are on par with any I've ever seen here. And the depth, but the depth is what puts it over the top. Yeah, I, I would add Sam Williams Dixon to that too, because he's running yes. a lot a lot against the threes, yes. but to his credit, he's making plays against the threes. And so another name there to watch at running back. But again, ladies and gentlemen, they're not tackling. Yeah. I mean, so you're going to look, always look really good as a running back when you're not getting tackled. Andy, are you going to talk quarterback? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to set the table for you because there's a lot of scuttlebutt around social media right now about what's going on with this quarterback battle. There's a lot of, because fans are allowed in, there's a lot of people saying what they saw. Right. Here's what's going on with the quarterback battle. In seven-on-sevens, they do split squad, where sometimes some of the ones run with Will Howard and some of the ones run with Devin Brown. That is with a portion of the ones that Devin Brown has been running with. The bottom line is, and these are just facts, Devin Brown is running with the twos right now. Will Howard took every rep except for one with the ones when it was full team 11 on 11. The one rep he didn't take was taken by Julian Sayan, who threw a pick six. Devin Brown is running with the twos in full team. Will Howard is running with the ones. And just to get that out of the way, that is as clearly as we can explain it. And then I'll hand it over to you to tell, you, tell us what you saw. Yeah, I don't think any of the quarterbacks were at their best today. I think Will Howard was the best of the group. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, I don't think it was maybe as prolific today as we saw yesterday. Yeah, uh, That's fine. There's ups and downs in training camp. One running back note to be off the back of off, uh, what Tim was saying, the, the stiff arm we saw from Quinshawn Judkins. There's a lot of spin move talk about him with the EA College Football video game, but that stiff arm was pretty impressive. Uh, as far as the quarterback goes, yeah, again, I think Will Howard was the best of the group. Still, you know, trying to stack days and, and gradually improve with his progression. Um, Devin Brown had some good throws. Again, the deep ball has been his strong suit so far in training camp. Uh, Julian Sayan, probably one of his worst days so far in training camp. That's going to happen with a true freshman. He is still getting those reps, like you said, with that first team offense. And Jermaine still, Matthews, you will see him in his sleep tonight. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was, the pick six was made by Jermaine Matthews. I believe the pass was intended for Jeremiah Smith. So not a bad guy to try to force the ball to, but Jermaine Matthews made him pay. Afterwards, celebrated with a picture on the sideline with Bryce West and Miles Lockhart. Uh, that was pretty funny. Getting ready for the NFL, I guess, a little early. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, I think that was one of two picks. The other pick was made by Calvin Simpson Hunt, who on picked Devin off Brown, yeah. Devin Brown. Calvin um, Simpson Hunt, where's he from? Waxahachie, Texas. There you go. Uh, one other thing on quarterbacks, Lincoln Keenholz, I took, for my money, had the best throw of the day. Scrambling left, uh, you know, against his body then, firing one into the sidelines, almost tipped away, and instead you look up, oh my gosh, Brandon Ennis actually caught that. It was, uh, yeah. I believe the saying is you could drive it through a, net, a gnat's you-know-what, yeah. and I th- think that's what Lincoln did. It just a, legs. a perfect throw um, right there. The other best throw of the day, I thought, was Will Howard across the middle of Jeremiah Smith on a very long-developing dig route that Will just kind of stuck with, stuck with, found him when he got open. Two best throws for my money on the day. Devin Brown throw, though. He did have one that was uh, the Jaden Ballard that he yes. picked up juggling catch yeah. over Calvin Yeah, Yeah, so it was a great throw as well. So I would say those are the top three throws, and we get three quarterbacks covered there. Um, and then Aaron Nolan, um, seven on seven reps, zero reps for the second straight day in full 11 on 11. Again, don't shoot the messenger. This is just what we see. Yeah. Um, no team reps, 11 on 11 reps for air 
um, very clearly, I think, running fifth right now in the quarterback room. Other than quarterback, though, because that's a lot of quarterback talk there. Tim, what what are you seeing? Uh, where do you want to take this? I'm I'm going to take it to the offensive line once you give me the mic back. See, I'll, but, yeah, I'm go- I'm going to uh, couch everything with the fact that they're still not playing real football. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, from an offensive line standpoint, but you are. I, I just I think this offensive line is going to be very good. Oh yeah. Great. That remains to be seen. I just like the way some guys have progressed. Uh, especially, I keep bringing him up. You know, y'all may knock me down, but I like Tegra Shabola. He has no, a great, I... great attitude, and he's mm-hmm. getting after it. He does look like the new look Tegra Shabola. He understands this is make it or break it, sort of. Do or die time, more of that. Uh, but uh, I just like the way they, they can put a competent line out there. I like the way Seth McLaughlin is playing. I like the way he's been snapping. Uh, I like the way Hensman came back. It seems to be, you know, 100 percent. And we all know they're not going to throw away equity that they built in a Carson Hensman no. last year. Him starting every every regular season game. Did he have some trials and tribulations? Both. But uh, the bottom line is, I'm so curious about whether you may see them play six or seven guys mm-hmm. on that offensive line on a regular basis. Meaning guys going in for guys, et cetera, especially in the first uh, the first three games before they settle on a true group. But uh, that's one observation I have. Yeah, I've got in the notes here a couple guys who stood out. Um, Josh Fryer and Josh Simmons, end of notebook. Um, listen, guys, like I'm going to keep talking them up. Josh Simmons and Josh Fryer are putting together a fantastic first few days of camp from for, from what I've seen. Josh Simmons, I think Justin Fry and Mike Salini challenged him a little bit today. They were doing one-on-ones, and he took a rep against JT Tuimolo and won the rep. And then instead of going to the guard, you know, they go outside and then go one by one each guy. Yeah. No, they made Josh Simmons come back, take another rep consecutively, this time against Jack Sawyer, because he just beat JT Tuimolo out, wins the rep over him, goes against Jack Sawyer, wins the rep over him. Yeah. You go flip to the other side, and you've got Josh Fryer, then his next rep, winning a rep over uh, Caden Curry. Like, these guys are performing really, Breaking really rocks. well. Um, I just I, I can't say enough great things about them. The, the progression they've made, we were watching them just get, in all honesty, and I think they would agree, they were getting dog walked last year by these defensive ends and one on ones and pass settings, and they are really really holding their own. And the other note that I will give is, I think it was a rest day a little bit for Donovan Jackson. Not a lot of work there, especially in the team drills. Um, it was really hot. I will say, could have just been that. Um, yeah. We saw Austin Those Sarah. Guys, guys start picking up little nagging things. You just yeah. out of precaution. You, you will sit him occasionally. So it was a light day for him. Yeah. In his stead, we got uh, left guard Austin Saraveld got some work there with the ones, the first team left guard, because of the uh, absence, if you will, from yeah. uh, Donovan Jackson. Kind of an interesting note because we're starting to see a little bit of how that depth chart might shake out. Yeah, Andy. and even though this was like, you know, not tackle football, we saw JT Tuomolo go down and stay down for a little while and then finally got up. I think it was him that was on the field. Uh, you know, uh, went off his own his own volition and stuff, but did get attended to. So it looked like he might have gotten a little bit of a head bump or something like that. Uh, but it's early in camp, and so what does that matter? But the bottom line is, I really like that defensive end unit, though, even though, as you were saying, they were getting dominated. I still like the depth of that group. And uh, Kenyatta Jackson, if not now, when? You know, I keep talking about uh, Tegra Shibola. Kenyatta, the same guy, you know. Now you've got two big-time guys in front of you, but – I think you're going to play a lot of guys, and these guys deserve to play. That's my take. Go ahead. Yeah, just more offensive line notes. As you said, Austin Saraville, I think, has been the second-team guy at left guard for a while. We saw that in the spring, seeing it again in training camp. Uh, Luke Montgomery, more work at center today. Yes, yeah, second team. to work with second team as well. Yeah. So I think improving with some of the snap exchanges, working out some kinks in a new position for him. Yeah. Um, you know, go across the board with the wide receivers. Carnell Tate, I think, had a really good day today. Just Made stacking some quarterbacks them. look pretty good. Uh, reaching back over across the body to make some catches over the middle of the field. Uh, Jeremiah Smith again made a couple of good catches. You mentioned the one over the middle from Will Howard. Um, I, special teams notes, I want to say that I think Jalen McLean will play right away just because yes. he's such a maniac running to the football. Aaron Scott Jr. as well is someone I expect to lose his black stripe pretty soon. I don't know if they did black stripe removals today before we started filming this, but I assume that we'll start to see those rolling in after four practices. And I would bet that Aaron Scott Jr. is going to be one of the first guys to lose it. I'll give Garrett Stover another nod. Good guy. Tyleek, anybody lose their black stripe today? 
No, no black stripes. Three ninety one. Three ninety one. Three ninety one. Three ninety one. There you go. <laughs> so no black stripes today. There you have it from Spin one of loose. the one of the leaders of the team, Ty Leak, telling us there's no black stripes today. But uh, yeah, I would say Garrett Stover. I'm Tim. Yeah. Did you see? You, bet, you got any eyes on Garrett Stover today? No, I. I, I he's. I, I did not. Okay, well. He, I'm not going to sit here and go. Yeah. Next time, no. But what I'm telling you is, the next time we're out here. Keep an eye on him. I, I'm well, I brought intrigued. him up with us, he's, remembering the conversation the other day. He's, but, you know, sometimes, like, Andy sees guys that I don't see. Yeah. And says, like, oh, that guy's over there. Yeah. I wrote Garrett down a little bit. He's quick. Yes. Like, he is He is safety fast in a linebacker's body. And it might not happen this year because of the linebacker depth. But, like, special teams-wise, you, you mentioned guys on special teams, Jalen McClain and, and who, Aaron, who, Scott. Aaron Scott, like, good players. Like, don't be surprised if, if you're seeing a couple of those other freshmen not take the red shirt because they're doing well enough on special teams. I'm, the depth on this on this roster, Tim, doesn't just extend to the twos. It's like, okay, the specialists should be at a higher level Correct. because yeah. the team is just better That's overall. That's why I keep saying this is the deepest roster I've ever covered at Ohio State of competent dudes yeah. who could play a could play a role somewhere along this at least 16 game season is what they're what, is what they're pushing for, and you got to have that. And uh, you know, it's just funny. I was just sitting here thinking because when you're sitting here in preseason camp. And you're watching the same team over and over. It's kind of like watching somebody paint a room the same color four days in a row yeah. to a certain extent. But I'm just sitting here thinking, what is it that maybe we should be criticizing right now? And I'm, I'm running really hard to try to find that, except I will say this. There have been quite a few quarterbacks run past us on the sideline uh, the last four days, meaning either – Either turnovers, interceptions, uh, drop snaps, whatever you want to. You understand what I'm saying? And a, and a few other guys on the offensive side of the ball, which means this defense is creating havoc even when they're not really playing football yet. Yeah. You see where I'm going? I'm just extrapolating there. And so, the, what's the big uh, the big uh, criticism of this defense from a year ago? Eleven turnovers. Yeah, in 13 yeah. games. Exactly. And and this man over here can break it down even farther than that if he wants. But the bottom line is. They're getting their hands on a lot of footballs. Yeah. And I think that's encouraging. I agree. Um, before we get out of here, um, any other notes I have? Uh, Carnell, like you said, Carnell makes the notebook a lot. And Dave Sinigbenosin, what a day for that guy. Um, you know, I will give some credit to Calvin Simpson Hunt for having an interception. Obviously, the credit to Jermaine Matthews for having the pick six. But IGB, man, as they like to call him, that is a ferocious dude who is – looks a lot better than he did last year, and last year is pretty damn good, Andy. Yeah, and another note for the secondary as well, Lorenzo Styles Jr. was back out there a little yeah. do more, I think, today. Had the full green penny on, and was at that nickel spot with the second team unit, so you had Aaron Scott uh, kind of taking a little bit of a back seat, so it was Calvin Simpson Hunt on one outside, Jermaine Matthews on the other outside. He's been inside the first couple of practices. Instead, you had Lorenzo Styles Jr. in the inside corner spot at the nickel, so I think they want to give him that opportunity to earn that role. We'll see if he does so, if he can get back to full 100%, but he's doing more and more every day. Yeah, it's too bad we don't get to watch every practice because starting next, starting this coming week, I would like to watch every practice. I mean, there's going to be there's, there's going to be some guys make some big moves like Jack Sawyer, for example. Now there's going to be some guys make some big moves here, and now that's going to put it in the coach's hands. Where am I going with this? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Do I play the do I play the young guy over the little bit older guy, even though they're both pretty – I mean, that's this kind of roster. And it's going to be curious when they're really playing football to see who really steps forward. Day four in the books. Tim May, he's going to go break it down at LettermanRow.com. Andy Baxter, going to go break it down at LettermanRow.com. Me, Spencer, I'll be there, LettermanRow.com. We have a lot to get to. Um, Tuesday we're going to be back in here talking to players, no more watching. Um, just talking to Wednesday we'll talk to some players Thursday we'll talk to Ryan Day I think again um, a full week of coverage on the way but first we're going to break everything down I've got I'm going to unload the notebook Andy's going to unload his notebook Tim is going to unload his uh, write a couple stories we're going to have a lot over at lettermanroad.com come join us there now there's never been a better time we'll see you guys over there and we'll see you guys back in here on Tuesday for another edition of the practice report on Letterman Row.